Welcome to Evernote in the Wild, Provence edition. I'm Stacey Harmon. I'm an Evernote certified expert and principal of Harmon Enterprises, where through my membership community, self-paced programs and guides, I help you to organize your life with Evernote. And my philosophy has always been to teach what I personally do myself. And I use Evernote every day as my dashboard for running my life, both personally and professionally. And back in 2016, I did a video tutorial series called Evernote in the Wild, where over the course of several short videos, I showed how I use Evernote to support me during a month-long work-from-anywhere adventure I took to Bali, Indonesia. Um, and six years later, I've decided to reprise the series. This time, I'm going to show you how I use Evernote version 10 to support me in prepping for and managing an upcoming trip I'm taking to Provence, France. So the idea is, through this series, you'll be able to see how an Evernote expert uses Evernote in a real-life case study, and hopefully, you can take the lessons you learn and apply them to your own life and Evernote usage. So in this first video, I'm going to start with a bit of background about how this Provence trip came about, and then I'll take you into Evernote and I'll show you how I've set up Evernote to support me along the way. So first, let's talk about how the trip came about and what's in front of me for the next few weeks so you understand the situation of what I'm kind of dealing with. A few days ago, like literally 48 hours ago, my boyfriend told me that a family member of his had bought an all-inclusive week-long food and wine tour of Provence, France. And for a variety of reasons, they can't go anymore. Um, they don't have trip insurance and the trip's non-refundable. But if Ray and I wanted the trip and wanted to go, they would gift it to us. So I love to travel. And as a self-employed person, if I have power and Wi-Fi, I can work from anywhere. Uh, and I have access to my entire life in Evernote as well. My boyfriend, Ray, he's got a flexible vacation policy on his job and he's never been to Europe. And we both love great food and wine. So we decided we're, we're going to France. We can't miss this opportunity. The kicker is the trip's in three weeks, okay? So it's quick. Um, so over the past 48 hours, we've been juggling a lot of things around and succeeded in booking round trip transportation to Paris. Paris and then to the pickup point in Avignon to take advantage of this generous trip. So we're going, the trip is on. And as you can imagine, there's a lot to coordinate. And not surprising to anybody who's followed me, I turned immediately to Evernote to kind of manage it all. And in this series of videos, I'm going to show you how I use Evernote to plan the logistics of the trip, stay on top of all the tasks and to-dos, collaborate with Ray on all of it, keep my top uh, keep on top of my business even during the trip. You know, I'm expecting I'm not going to have good Wi-Fi, so that's a factor I'm planning for. I'll show you kind of how I deal with that, um, yet still stay connected to um, my business uh, while I'm there, while enjoying myself as well. Um, I'm going to show you kind of how I work to stay productive from the road and then keep me organized and sane as I balance the next three weeks as well as through the trip and beyond. So obviously I couldn't do any of it without Evernote and I'm going to give you a peek into how I manage it all. So each video will spoke, focus on a specific feature or workflow element and I'll bring you along on this adventure with me. So let's start by going into Evernote and I'll show you the first thing I did when I was clear that the trip was going to happen. So here in Evernote, the very first thing I did was create a project notebook to manage all the parts and pieces of the trip and share it with Ray. He also is an Evernote user. So collaborating with other Evernote users and uh, being able to centralize all the parts and pieces of our trip in a notebook, really, really useful. So in my case, I have a determined naming convention that I like to use. I have all my trips and travel preceded by uh, this nomenclature. And then I, I include the date with a year, month, uh, day type of naming convention. And then I put in the keywords. And you can see here I added an emoji to this one. Uh, you can use whatever you want. It could be travel. You don't have to use the word travel. You could just use the location. You could put it all in a stack. There's lots of options for how you organize these. This is just my own personal reference. Um, you can see I've got a couple other events going on over here. Um, so this sorts them in date order, which I really like. Um, and there's a couple of resources that I can share with you to talk about You know how naming conventions impact your uh, notebook titles and the sort order on your stuff, but it's all very intentional what I did here. Um, and then you can see here, I shared it with him, which you can just do via the, the share notebook 
option here uh, to other Evernote users. They do need to be an Evernote user to be able to see all the details that are in it. Um, and then when you go into the notebook, you can see that he and I are centralizing all the stuff that we kind of have going on. We're forwarding in emails. Um, I've been clipping Wi-Fi information. Uh, he likes Anthony Bourdain and we're looking at uh, shows about that. Uh, we've got in forwarding in our flight confirmations, our hotel information, and I created this project management note here, which kind of is a high level summary of the information we've collected so far, has links out to additional resources that in this case live in Google. So I can just click on that and access it. Um, all the stuff's starting to get organized and has all happened, you know, just in the last couple of days. You can see how quickly this type of stuff can add up. So uh, we are, it's a key project notebook, which transfers or translates to you know, whether it is a travel thing or you're working on a business project, I'm a big fan of using notebooks to define the parameters of the project. And so the very first thing I did was create a notebook here where we can collect and organize everything that's related and he and I can both see it. So you can see um, there are some upcoming to do's that I'm putting here. I will talk in a future episode about if we should use checklists or tasks for this and when uh, I use each of those. Uh, but this is the container and the key lesson uh, to start us off, which is centralize everything, no matter what method you get it into Evernote, um, um, put it into a project notebook and then start organizing it from there. You'll see I actually have designed a lot of naming conventions, given a lot of naming conventions to our notes and not others. So these will go in. They were just added. Um, so we're going to go ahead and and retitle those to provide some organization. I'll provide more insight into that as we go along. But for now, get that notebook in place, start centralizing everything. And this is our saving grace in terms of staying coordinated together. So that's your first tip and I will be back with more. Be sure to subscribe to the Harmon Enterprises YouTube channel in order to be automatically notified of the next installment. I will see you then.